You know, I'd be lying if I said I would have expected to still be hunting for a Great One Red Deer nearly halfway through February. I remember I was sitting in a tree stand hunting in real life when the first Great One Red Deer was discovered, and that would have been sometime in November, I forget the exact release date, but here we are months later, still on the search, and we know that pop reset is upcoming. I wanted to get out here again, I know we've done a lot of Red Deer content in the recent past, but I kind of want to just, as I've been saying, double my efforts, and if there's going to be one out here, I'd love to get it on this first kind of go-round before the pop reset. Now, the last time that we were out here, it did feel like we were finally starting to make progress. We of course got our diamond that snapped a streak of more than 1,000 stacks with that one. And we got a mythical piebald, our biggest rare red deer ever, and of course, our biggest rare red deer of this grind. Actually, we had another mythical piebald earlier on, but not only was it smaller, it was also uneven and not really in a good way. But I have been trying to do some runs in between. I rarely do videos where it's a Red Deer run and then immediately the next run I do is also recorded. I like to get some runs in between there just to hopefully switch it up a bit. And as we weave our way around some wolves that are trying to get through here, actually starting off kind of similar to last time, a max redesimate level 7, barely into that 210 to 240 range, but a nice 190 gold to get us going. Man. One day, we'll see a rack that looks kind of like that, but it'll say level 10 and not level 7. Every time I see it, I think there's maybe some hope that that's it. Especially from the broadside angle, you see all those tines there. It kind of does have that appearance. I can't believe we got that second drop shot when he sort of warped like that. Got pretty lucky. There's another 5 over here too that we might as well try to bring down. It's got to be over 200 meters if the... Stag didn't spook. Guess we'll let him even lift his head. A lot of times I'll go for like brain shots, but especially not knowing the range, I think we'll kind of be a little more safe. And by the way, I should clarify, I'm going for brain shots on like a five where I don't mind what the score ends up, uh, ends up getting. Like I don't mind if I lose the medal. I don't want to brain shot level nine, obviously, because that will hit the skull and ruin the trophy organs harvest check. 3 for 3 though on our hard shots there I believe, unless maybe that one, uh, our follow up shot on the other stack over here was neck. Either way it was 3 for 3 on insta kill shots, we'll know for sure in just one second it was a hard shot, just kinda got that, I don't know, artery, might be the right word, the, the top one there, that still counts as a hard shot, nice little level 6, and then of course next to the 199.5 level 7, it's amazing that it doesn't score over 200. Because we see some of the 200 scoring red deer, and it's just, just the way that they're scored is a little bit weird. Like, uh, number of times makes a big difference. Main beam length is the biggest thing in any red stag scoring, but I don't know. This to me looks bigger than a lot of the level 7s that score higher. Now, this is a bit of a different situation for me, and we'll kind of see how it ends up going, but. Normally, in these red deer hunts, I'll have a highlight or multiple highlights from the previous runs, whether that's a rare or a diamond or whatever it may be, and in this case, we kind of have that, except it's going to be not a highlight, it's actually going to be happening right now, and I'll explain as it's kind of going on exactly what we are dealing with, and of course, it seems like the red deer are very close to our tripod today, but, oh, those are actually move along, we're all good, they're going to be coming through here. And we'll see right there, there's a piebald level 6, and basically, the last run that I did, I saw him there, knew he was there, and obviously, like, I don't just record the entire run, I'll wait, um, press record if something like that shows up, and in this instance, it's not like most other zones, if I see a, a trophy stag of some kind standing out 200 meters away, I can take my time, get ready, record it, do my thing, but in this case, because I just fast travel here and the stag is run by, I saw the piebald, figured might as well save it for the, the next video, and uh, yeah, looks like we're good there with our two shots. Now it's a level six. I didn't even look at the estimate to be completely honest. I don't think that can make gold. One side would have a chance and one side I don't think can. He's close, 174.5. So I guess that would put him at our third best piebald. It's so interesting. The way that stuff happens in these grinds, and by the way, our first shot actually was good enough to 
uh, get the, the vital bonus as well. When we got started, we had two albinos, a melanistic, and then I think we went back, got another albino or two, another melanistic, and then over four or five piebalds in a row, no other rares. It, it's just so fascinating the way that the distribution of rares and diamonds and stuff ends up working out. And I guess, you know, we had a th that streak of a thousand stags with no diamonds, and I had some theories that maybe there, there was a diamond or a great one on the map, and that was just kind of making it so diamonds weren't spawning or just trying to give some kind of rationality to it in my head. But when you see stuff like that, when you see that many piebalds in a row with no other rares or that streak of no diamonds, I think it just shows more than anything the randomness of these grinds and why the poverty set that I've mentioned that, that's upcoming, I don't think that's going to be that terrible of a thing. A lot of people look at it as kind of resetting their grind. To me, I, I just look at it as kind of a fresh start. Now, 4,000 plus kills, I would love to get a great one from, you know, those specific sets of respawns, but sometimes it just doesn't go that way, and we'll kind of see where it ends up. We've got some time still until then, but anyway, one not so good shot there, right, in the vertebrae, and that is exactly why I took the second shot immediately on that piebald. I'm sure you noticed, and anybody that's played the game for a while has no doubt experienced it, when you shoot an animal that's on the move, they will flinch might be the best word for it, and you kind of get a moment to get a second shot in there, and just in case that would have been a vertebrae shot or too far back or anything, that's why I immediately got that other shot in there. Might need to use the 22 strat here on that level 6, just because there's no good way to get a shot in there. What if we... There we go. I think he's a little further behind that hill than he looks, and shooting the hill did not alert him. Just enough room, I think, to get that shot over the hill and into a lung, and we'll get to level 4, or oh, maybe, as well. I'm gonna do that same thing. Where are all these tags coming from? It's been interesting. Uh, thanks, Sir12, for not letting that second shot go through. A couple of spots we've seen more stags than I would expect to. That last area where we shot the pie ball, that was the first time I've seen three stags there in a long time. Figures. He stopped right when that shot was going through, so that one might not go down. We got the other two. Actually, if we walk over here, I hate to waste time, but if we take it slow, he may end up returning and giving us another shot. So actually, no need for that. The looks of the hunting pressure would say to me that the re-stags have been shot and killed here, so we'll have to go and track down the other one. I was seeing, yeah, the two spots of blood. I don't think that one stag ever got into the water. Like, I don't see him floating over. I'm not sure what direction he ran in, though. And if I saw the blood correctly, yeah, that first shot was not a vital hit. I kind of had a feeling when he ducked, we almost hit him in the neck that it just wasn't going to work, so we got that follow-up in there. I actually just heard a wolf growl. Normally, I won't shoot them when I'm doing this grind, unless I see, like, a mythical. Uh, I just figure I'm more likely to shoot too many wolves and leave the zone. So, probably I'm just gonna go jump in the water and wait till they run away. And with the wolves gone, finally, we are caught up and have no more tracking to do, so hopefully we can keep it that way. Intestine shot, I kind of thought that may have been intestines, that kind of saved us there. A little further back and he wouldn't be going down. Now that's a good looking start to our river run. I've begun to kind of recognize that as a level 7 or 8 rack. There's just some kind of subtle differences between that and the one that can be a level 9. Now, I think we're going to have to fire a 22 round again just to alert them. The hinds are just kind of unfortunately placed right in front of the stags. So the one difficulty here is because they're alert now, they run a lot more quickly. So we have to be faster with our shots. I thought that may have been just a touch far forward. We almost had that as a vital hit, and then when he stood still, I think we got it in there. So it could have been a lot worse. Definitely could have been better. But I think in the end, we're going to have two golds. I don't know how I didn't see that, but another big one over in here. I don't know. That might have been a skull shot. It, it was a mythical, so it doesn't matter that much. I probably wouldn't have done that on a level 9. We may well have lost out on the gold by ruining the trophy organs. That goes all the way back to the level 5 that I was talking about not 
uh, not make it a brain shot on for the bigger ones. Let's see. There's a chance it was low enough to just be neck. Yeah, actually, that was all the way up in the brain, so no shot at being low enough to avoid damaging the trophy organs, but I think that's our biggest stag of the hunt at 228. Messed up the gold, but again, doesn't matter that much, as long as it's not a rare or a diamond, I don't mind too much. But now, three big stags, kind of all next to each other on the river here. Kind of interesting to see that. Most of the time when I come over here, we get like a bunch of fives and sixes. I'm not sure that we've killed a diamond at all. I remember a troll nine, the, the one troll nine that we've had in that uh, set of 1,000 stags with no diamond was over here. Not seeing any stags there, so we've got this tent over here. I think fast travel into it may spook the red deer, we'll see. Unfortunately, it did. Normally, if you fast travel anywhere when you're out of render of the red deer, they don't spook, but when you've already gotten within render of them, then you kind of start to have them run off. And there was one other over there. The second shot's going to be intestines, I think, enough to bring him down. First shot may have been a little bit too low. And by the way, th this is kind of why I tend to cut out some of the smaller stags. Sometimes it just works out that way where, you know, we're mid-conversation about something and then there's small stags and we might as well take them. But when it's a bunch of fours, fives, and sixes, it's just not as interesting, at least not to me. That shot worked out pretty good. Lung, liver, and stomach, and it's 8.40 right now, so we've got, I think, five real minutes if I'm doing my math uh, correctly in my head until 9 o'clock. And only one spot yet to check, so as long as that six went down reasonably quickly and we saw the health dropping, I think we're all good. Not too bad. 8.45 and one last lake to go and check. And what a spot it is. There are four stags packed into this absolute mess here. We're at the, the far west lake, by the way, in the middle of the map. And normally this is the case. I, I don't know if there's two or three herds of red deer there. But uh, I guess I deleted the zone maybe last time. And... <laughs> I don't know how we're going to do this. I think this may be an instance of actually using the 300. So that level 7 should make gold. We'll probably get whatever shots off we can with the M1 after that. But then if we can get a follow-up on one of the other stags fleeing with the 300, any flesh hit will take down a stag from that. Whereas with the M1, it won't. So we'll see what we can do. I think there is room to sneak a shot in there. I don't even know what we're hitting anymore. I don't think we hit the stag, so... Let's just go 300. This is, uh, maybe not our best, what, ethical hunting might be the way to say it, but in terms of bringing down all stags and, and some random hinds, that's the way to do it. We hit them all, so, uh, tracking it will definitely be a thing, but sometimes that's just kind of the way that you gotta approach it. And by the way, I had a theory for a long time when I did the white tail great one grind. I refuse to use anything but like the, the correct weapons. So the, the M1 or whatever weapon I maybe was using on the day, it was always something that was class four. I always thought maybe getting the correct metal or something actually mattered. But Kyla does it with a 300. She got her great one red deer back in December. I know a lot of people grind red deer with weapons like the 300. So that's not a negative thing to do if you want to do it that way. And as I mentioned, holy smokes, there's some stags here. As I mentioned, the 300 is going to bring them down with any hit, so if you're maybe a little more worried about your shot placement, that's one way to guarantee you're going to bring them down. And perhaps with the opportunity to end on an ethical note with our hunting, we'll take these guys with the M1. I'm a little worried. We got that guy in the lung. I got to thinking that might have been a little over 300, but both were lung shots. So yeah, six stags to go and claim. I think that's going to be interesting, uh, running around and trying to pick them all up and keep track of what tracks are what, but they should generally have run in the same direction from here. I see one down there. Of course, we did drop our seven a hard shot, kind of dipped right over that hide. It had to have been the case. 188 for him. And then the fun part, we got a stag down here, 153.9. That was the one I attempted to neck shot just to try to inst drop him with the 300 there. Then we've got one of the hinds, and I think we shot more than one. That was an intestine hit. I actually think there are two stags laying right up here. So if I'm not mistaken, that should then be hit. So 
not bad. Kind of shows the utility of the 300. Naturally, we're going to see bronzes with these guys. 161.6 with that 300 intestine shot. And I'm going to assume maybe a similar hit for this one, since they ran about the same distance. And it, it could be the case that we shot this one second. Actually, even just flesh. So maybe we shot that one first. Maybe he ran a little further than it would have appeared. But it got him down pretty quick. And then finally, the last two. A gold 194 there at 287 meters. So it wasn't over 300. And a little silver 165. And this video ended up being, I believe, an accidental showcase of what happens if we do include a lot of those smaller stags. And make no mistake, I cut a number of them out of the video as well. But... I'm sure this video is a little longer than most of our recent Red Deer hunts, and that's kind of why, but it's nice to get to include a bunch more stags, and actually we have a piebald to head back to the trophy lodge yet for. I would never wish that this grind would continue longer than it has to, but I do like to see as we continue to go along how this trophy lodge has filled up with all these different Red Deer, and when the grind eventually comes to an end, and I do have to assume that we're going to get a great one red deer eventually, it's just a matter of time. I want to count everything, all the stags, all the hinds, I, I want to say there's only been one rare hind actually from this grind, the rest were old. And just see like what the total number of trophy red deer is. As you can see, there are a bunch that have been acquired over the course of this grind, and I know I am... Nowhere near the top of the list as far as like the most trophy red deer on the grind. I've seen crazy lodges and stuff in the community, but it is pretty neat to watch it fill up. It does feel like that is a pretty good indication of how much effort has gone into this grind and the amount of total kills. But anyway, that is officially going to do it for this video. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.